Hello, this is Deanne Rice at DeanneRice.com, and this is part three of a video series that I'm doing called Photoshop Made Easy. Now, I'm doing this video series as part of a video blog challenge being hosted by Barry Wells over at Barry-Wells.com. For part three, I'm going to show you how to blend two pictures or images together and how to blend a picture or image into a background. So let's go on over to Photoshop and get started. The first way that I'm going to show you how to do this is using layer masks and the gradient tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to the bottom of the, uh, the layers palette and add a layer mask to layer one, which is my right hand picture, which is the one I want to work with first. Then I'm going to come over and choose the gradient tool, and I need to choose my settings up here along the toolbar. And I want the black and white the linear gradient, and for the mode, I like to choose normal. Now you can do it in dissolve, but if it's any of the rest of them down here, some of these do not work. So I stick with normal. For the opacity, I like 24%. That works pretty well, but this is something that you can play with. and change as you're doing it because this is really something that it some, takes me a long time to do this usually and I'm going to try and do it really quickly so we'll see how good it, it turns out but um, you can change this as you need to. I leave all three of the next boxes unchecked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. You start where you want completely faded out and end where you want the picture to be completely visible, not faded at all. So I'm just going to fade over here just a little bit. You can see it faded a little bit. Now, I, I'm going to do this two or three times. Each time I'll fade a little bit more. Now, I could do it all at once by um, changing the opacity from 24 to something higher, but I'd rather do it just several times so I have a little more control over just how much it's fading and that really isn't too bad now I'm going to go to my left hand picture so I'm going to choose layer 2 put a layer mask on it the layer mask is chosen you gotta make sure the layer mask is chosen because if I click here now the layer mask isn't chosen now it is okay so this time I want it to fade start fading way over remember the the left hand picture is behind the right hand picture. So I want it to start fading way over into here. Okay, and I want it to end just past the line. Now I'm going to do that a couple times. What I really want to do is get rid of that line. And that's not too bad. I think I'm going to go up to layer one and do it a couple more times from this side. Oops. I'm going to have to go back, step back, because I didn't have my layer mask chosen. So. Okay, and that's not too bad. I still need to get rid of the line, and a way of doing that is to pick the brush. I want it to be one of these ones that's fuzzy on the outside, and I really want it to be fairly small, because I just kind of want to go up and down that line. So another thing to look at is you really need to have white on top and the black behind. And I am going to go down. I that's let's see. I'm going to step back and I'm going to change this down to about 32%. So I think that was way too much. And, yeah, it's not quite enough, so I'll put it up about 48. Okay, there, you can see it's kind of fading out that line right there. And I probably didn't want to do it up at the top. But you get the idea. And this takes a lot of playing with in order to really get it done right. So, um... <clears throat> 
that's layer mask and gradient tool. Now, let's go back over to, let's go over to this picture, back to the same picture again. I'm going to show you another way of doing this. And this time, I'm going to start out with just the right hand picture. And I'm going to pick the square rectangular tool. And I'm going to choose a whole picture except for the very left hand side. And I'm going to come up here to select and inverse, and that makes it select just that little bit on the left hand side. I'm going to go select, modify, feather. And I usually use 15 pixels and it works pretty well. Okay, now I'm going to hit the delete. And look at that, it's faded it out. I'm going to hit a couple more times because I really want it to be faded over further off to the right. And that's not bad at all, right there. We're going to call it good. So I'm going to go up to select, deselect, and then select all. Control C. And over here, Control V. I'm going to hide the layer two. Pick my pointer tool, and I'm going to bring this picture on down. And look at that. It's, it's really just faded in really nicely in the two pictures are. Now this is a little bit dark right there. Kind of funny because it's light above it. So we can just grab our um, little brush and make this a little bit less and just kind of go over that dark area, which makes it not stand out. And I like that. That is so simple. So I'm going to show you one more. And for this one, I'm going to put it on this background. And this is the picture I'm going to put on the background. And what I did was I used a tool called Color Cop, which is right here. And I took my little magnifying glass over, and I just, I got the color from right along here, because that's where I really wanted it to fade. I wanted my sky to fade right into my background. And then I took the number, if you put this on here, you get the number, the exact number, and you can go in and put it in for your background right there. Now I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. So I'm going to go over here. This time I'm going to use the elliptical tool, and I'm going to start right up here. I'm going to draw an ellipse right around it. Okay. Then I'm going to go select inverse and select modify feather. Okay. Delete. Select. Deselect. Select all. Control C. And go over there. Control V. And it's too big. But if I go edit, transform, scale and hold down on my shift button it will keep it proportional and I can make it just the right size and hit enter to accept it now I'm going to choose my arrow I'm going to move it there we go my sky is pretty much just fades right into um, the rest of the background there. And this doesn't, but it does have a nice feathering effect. And you could do it different if you wanted just to do it up in the corner. You could do that. Anyhow, it's something that's kind of fun to do, fun to play with. So I've showed you two ways to fade an image or a picture <clears throat> into a background or two images together like that and with the layers um, mask which I really don't like as well but you can do it and it takes a lot of work I really like oops, this one better so this is Deanne Rice at DeanneRice.com have a good day